So let's get some analysis on this then from Peter Matthews in Los Angeles. He's a professor of political science at Cypress College. Thank you very much for talking to us, Peter. You're How welcome. disruptive to be here. do you think these proposals could be to passengers across America? Well, the new proposals are different than the old ones, which was in, in place right now, and that's the laptop bans, which were also somewhat disruptive and a little bit dangerous because if the laptops couldn't be carried in the cabin, it would be stored in the luggage hole and it could be what's called thermal runaway. Uh, lithium ion batteries could actually catch fire, even blow a hole in the airplane. But right now, this is a broader way of doing it, I think, in a more efficient way, because then you're having enhanced screening. It will slow things down. It'll make it difficult for businessmen to get things done quickly and travelers to get to places quickly, but it will be safer in, in a sense because 105 countries are affected. It doesn't seem to be tar targeted just to Muslim-majority countries as the first ban, as the laptop ban was. So I think overall it's, it's a step in a certain direction. We'll have to see how it works out, though. Airlines were unhappy with the, uh, the idea of this laptop ban being extended. They were unhappy with it in the first place. Is this a compromise in some respects? In some respects, it's a compromise and it's an enhancement of security screening that doesn't target one particular group of nations or people. And the airlines were unhappy with the laptop ban because it did slow things down quite a bit. It hurt business people who want to use their laptops in the airplane to do business. So this may be the compromised and the uh, larger enhanced way of increasing security without hurting or affecting just one group of nations. And it may be a good thing. We'll have to see how it really works out because, you know, overall, travel is so important. I mean, you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars worth of business every day that's being conducted by people traveling the globe and the world. And yet, at the same time, security is important as well. And Homeland Security that Director John Kelly was trying to reach a compromise and work out some kind of consensus to be able to get this safety as well as security, as well as the freedom to do business. The freedom to do business properly uh, in some way worked out. We heard Kelly say that terrorists are looking for new ways to kill people all the time. Authorities obviously want to stay ahead of the game in this respect. Is enhanced security and therefore disruption at airports just something that we'll have to live with in the future? It's an inevitability going forward, is it? Unfortunately, I think it really is because after 9-11 here and then other kinds of uh, terrorist activity since then, uh, this has really put a crimp on a lot of the economy of different countries, including the United States, the enhanced security, the cost of the security. But it had to be done because even worse than that would be to have a disrupted community or a nation or a bunch of uh, several nations that are so insecure people won't even want to go to the airport or to go outside and do things like conduct business. And this is a very tough situation the world is in right now and we should all come together as nations who believe in the rule of law and try to stamp out these terrorists in some way or the other and some of these measures will help in some way. Okay, but there has to be foreign policy changes as well, which could work out too. Peter Matthews, thank you very much for talking to us.